Bengal Tiger at the Baghdad Zoo, which is opening up tonight, mm -hmm. see next weekend, with Robin Williams. I assume, was that a bigger production out in L.A., simply because of the uh, star it started, power it? It started at the Kirk Douglas, which is 250 seats, okay. and then it moved to the Tabor, which is 700. Um, and now being here, it's been fantastic to see, you know, every time we do it, it gets a little bit bigger. Um, and for me, every time I've done it, the room has been a completely different shape. And so um, getting kind of, I use a lot of surround sound. I use a lot of sound coming from the stage or coming from behind you or coming from the sides. Um, so in the first space, the room was so narrow and so short, I couldn't really get a lot of individual points around the room because it was so compact. And then we opened up to the taper that's three-quarter thrust. And so suddenly I had, I, their house system has 15 speakers in this round. So I had 15 different point sources if I wanted them wow. in the house alone. So it was this huge growth. And then to move into this speaker, this space where it was like, anything you need, we'll put a speaker there. It's like fantastic. Wow. <laughs> um, and it, that's. Where's, where's it playing here? It's playing at the. Uh, Richard, Richard Rogers. Richard Rogers. And, and how many people is that, is that seat? 1,400, 1,500. Wow, so yeah. doubled. Yeah. Did you get double the gear? Uh, it feels that way, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a lot of speakers in that space. So I'm actually co-designing with Acme Sound, and they kind of did all the system design for me. Um, and then I brought in all the cues from the space. So uh, they kind of took care of all the speakers for me. <laughs> so it's still your original sound design from L.A., but mm -hmm. just being enhanced by them. Yeah, and um, this is the first time that we're including microphones, too, because the taper is so partly because it's three-quarter thrust, but also when they renovated it, they built it with acoustics in mind. Um, I almost never have to reinforce anybody on the on the taper stage. So, mm -hmm. um, whereas 1,600 seats and a balcony and, you know, all that, we need reinforcement <laughs> here. So, so. This is, how, many, how many shows have you had come to New York outside? Is this the first one, or are there a um, couple I've ones? had one other um, go off-Broadway, The Marvelous Wonderettes. Um, yeah. It ran for 18 months in Los Angeles, and then it came out here and ran for almost 18 months here, too. So. Wow, yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah, it was did, did you come out here to work in the sound design for that? I did. So um, I was here, it opened in September of 2008. So I was here for three weeks putting it in then. So, so have you had shows, Broadway shows, come out to L.A. that you've worked on? Um, or do you work in mostly original productions? Uh, mostly original productions. I've come in, um, Ain't Misbehaven um, came out there, and... Uh, we've had a couple things that like, come into the Amundsen that I'll go in and assist on, but... Um, but someone else's sound design and you're kind of sort of sculpting it for that yeah. particular... Yeah, that I'm particular there to, because I know the theater, so I'm there to help them as the assistant. Well, yeah, there, is, there any, is there any kind of production, like, the type of show that you like to work on, or any specific show that you haven't worked on that you'd like to? Um, I don't know that there's a specific show that I want to work on that I haven't, op haven't but thing productions like... Bengal Tiger, where there is a lot of sound that isn't just, you know, what the script calls for. Um, it's, you know, the sound um, changes the room, and it changes the mood in the room, and it changes the feeling of what's going on, and for me, you know, the sound emanates from, from the characters, from their emotions, from their moods, from the things that they're going through, um, and, you know, Moises Kaufman is, he loves to use it's not even underscoring, it's just kind of tonal things that my composer put together um, that really enhance the feeling and it's not just the script calls for a bomb so we're going to have a bomb. You know, we can really kind of play with the script and enhance and, um, you know, the characters can feed off of that sound um, mm -hmm. that is kind of an active part of their world.